severe storm warning. Oh, it's roping out now. This twister tearing through the plains overnight and hail pounding the south. As dangerous winds send children in a bounce house to the hospital. Now the threat is moving east, millions in the path of dangerous weather this week. Also this morning, battling back, President Trump trying to move forward after that stunning health care defeat. I'm disappointed. I'm a little surprised, to be honest with you. Now the president setting his sights on a new tax fight. The White House signaling he's willing to work with Democrats after conservatives kill his health care bill. And violence erupting at pro-Trump rallies over the weekend. Outfit outrage. The young girls told they could not board a plane because they were wearing leggings. Now United Airlines facing a huge backlash as thousands call that decision unfair. And the unlikely hero, sealing North Carolina's place in the final four. Their thrilling last second win. As South Carolina stuns Florida. Punching its first ever ticket to the Final Four. Joining Gonzaga in Oregon, who will take home the title. Good morning, America. We're going to the Final Four. <laughs> Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. What about the madness, and not just because David is here. Right. March Madness. Oh, my goodness, those games were incredible. I'm your walk-on this morning. Yeah. I'm the Luke May, I hope. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. What a dramatic day. UNC sealing their trip to the Final Four with that last-second shot. Mike, you said you jumped off the couch. Jumped <laughs> off the couch, screaming and hollering. You see the shot there, but check out the celebration. The team, they took to the court dancing. On the court, I don't know what the hey, 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 I guess that's just oh, the, the rhythm of it. Room. The locker room. Oh. That's some of my favorite right there. Posting this video from the locker room. Look at Roy Williams right He's getting of it so. All. And you know what? It's great to see a coach like Roy Williams who's been around mm -hmm. for so long, but still, you know, understanding the players and still being involved and still being connected to the players like that. After He's all the years. only one of the coaches going that has Final Four experience. The other three coaches have never been there, including our friend, our new friend, South Carolina's coach. Frank Martin, remember, he was here last week cutting down the net, heading to the Final Four for the first time in school history. How about the women? Mississippi State, Mississippi State, Hale State going to the Final Four for the first time in school history. Stanford with an exciting win as well. So. You, know, you have okay. to All right. you can do, use your belly anytime you want. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It says, it says ring responsibly. Ring responsibly. <laughs> Since 4 a.m., she's been ringing it responsibly in the hallway. We're going to have a lot more of that ringing coming up as far, and also more of, of the final four. But first, we want to get to that severe weather that's spreading across the south, millions in the path of powerful storms from Texas to Kentucky. And let's go to Ginger Z, who's tracking it all. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning, Michael. In the heart of the severe season, we had at least 74 severe storm reports. Big Big hail, almost baseball size. This tornado uh, reported in Ada, Oklahoma. And look at this video. The hail that was falling in Argyle, Texas, busting windshields and then dropping into the pool in Denton County here in Highland Village, Texas. Just wild pictures coming out of there. And you'll see more of this today. I think primary threat is going to be in, including Memphis and eventually Nashville. Look at the severe storms as that same cold front comes across parts of uh, Kentucky back down through Mississippi. Robin, we've got not just today, but through Wednesday, a severe threat that we've got to talk about coming up. I know you're keeping an eye for it, on it for us, Ginger. Thank you. Now to President Trump trying to move forward this morning after that stunning health care defeat. The president blaming members of his own party for the failure. ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega has more on that story for us. Good morning, Cecilia. Hey, Robin, good morning to you. You're right. The blame game is in full force. The president now pointing fingers at everyone from Democrats to conservative Republicans for that blow to health care. President Trump now looking to lay blame after that crushing defeat on health care, blasting conservatives, tweeting, Democrats are smiling in D.C. that the Freedom Caucus, with the help of Club for Growth and Heritage, have saved Planned Parenthood and Obamacare. But the chair of the Freedom Caucus, unapologetic. Well, I mean, at this particular point, I can tell you, no one has been more uh, self-critiquing than, uh, than me. The president and fellow Republicans saying they are now looking to turn the page to their next big challenge, tax reform also signaling they may be ready to reach across the aisle. I think it's time for, uh, for our folks to come together. And I also think it's time to potentially get a few moderate Democrats on board as well. 
But will Democrats get on board? He moved so far the hard right that it's virtually impossible for us to work with him. If he changes, he could have a different presidency. The blame game comes after a weekend of clashes at pro-Trump rallies across the country. Protesters and Trump supporters coming to blows as the president seemed to be in his own battle with Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan with this head-scratching tweet saying, watch Judge Jeanine on Fox News Saturday night. Those who tuned in saw Judge Jeanine Pirro open her show with an explosive hit on Ryan. Paul Ryan needs to step down as Speaker of the House. The reason? He failed to deliver the votes on his health care bill. But the White House claims the timing was just a coincidence, and Paul Ryan has the president's full support. He doesn't blame Paul Ryan. In fact, he, he thought Paul Ryan worked really hard. He enjoys his relationship with Paul Ryan, thinks that Paul Ryan's a great speaker of the House. And one announcement expected today. The president expected to name his son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner to run a new office here at the White House. It is called the Office of American Innovation. And, David, it is charged with fulfilling campaign promises like reforming care for veterans. A David. lot of eyes on Jared Kushner as well. Cecilia, thanks to you. Let's bring in your teammate, Chief White House Correspondent Jonathan Carl. We've also got political analyst Matthew Dowd with us here this morning. And, John, first, the big picture here. You remember about a week before Election Day, then-candidate Donald Trump saying repealing and replacing Obamacare, one of the single most important issues, why we must win, and that you're going to have such a great health care at a tiny fraction of the cost is going to be so easy. How big of a defeat was this for him? Oh, this is a devastating blow, and not only because he fails to keep a key campaign promise, this puts in question the rest of the Trump agenda. Can he get anything else passed if he couldn't do this? Can he even keep the government running, which runs out of funding on April 28th? But but, David, this gives Trump a chance, I believe, to become the transformational president that he wanted to be. Because the only way out of this is to find a way to work with Democrats. There is no longer a Republican working governing majority. He could reach out to Democrats on drug prices, on infrastructure, even on closing special interest tax loopholes. You believe the defeat gives him that excuse? It gives him the chance to do it. Now, the problem with that is Democrats smell blood. And Trump has gone in the yeah. opposite direction so far. Now, so this would question, be a major course. Quick question on the millions who depend on Obamacare. They heard that it survived. They breathe a sigh of relief. And then they hear President Trump say over the weekend, we're going to let it explode. Yeah. So uh, Obamacare is the law of the land. That means the people that were depending on the subsidies will continue to have the subsidies. Medicaid expansion continues. But all the problems with Obamacare won't get addressed either. John, let's bring in Matt now. Matt, as you know, the big pivot now, the president, Republicans will aim to push for major tax reform, tax cuts. But without repealing Obamacare, doesn't this make what was already going to be so difficult even harder now? Absolutely, David. I mean, the health care reform was a building block that he needed for all his other parts of his plan, tax reform, infrastructure, that his budget was, that was a key building block. That's been removed, and now it falls down. I think Democrats are going to have a very hard time, not only because of their base, but because now they feel like they got a victory, to go along with tax cuts that primarily are aimed at the rich. So I think it's going to be really hard for Donald Trump to make that bridge on that particular piece of legislation. And Matt, just a few seconds left. You heard John go out on a limb there saying he could be a transformational president now, but how willing will the Democrats be on taxes or really to help with any legislative victory? Well, I think that's going to be very hard. I think their base is very much against Donald Trump, and I think Donald Trump would fundamentally have to change as a person to, to be able to do that. I would think about he, he needs to channel Michael Jackson, which is I'm starting with the man in the mirror. He needs to take a look at himself and make a change. That's what he needs to do. He needs to start the process by fundamentally changing who he is. That's the first time anyone's put it that way, that's for sure. All right, Matt Dow, John Call here with us this morning. Great to have you both guys. Robin? All right, David. Now overseas to turmoil in Russia. Mass demonstrations breaking out across the country, the biggest in years there by protesters angry about corruption. More than a thousand were arrested, including a leading critic of President Putin. ABC's Alex Marquardt has the latest and joins us this morning. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Robin. That's right. We haven't seen anything like this in Russia in at least five years. Far bigger protests than anyone expected. The official goal was to protest corruption, but demonstrators there making it clear their anger is bigger than that. It was the largest display of defiance against Vladimir Putin in years. Thousands marching in Moscow and almost 100 other cities and towns across Russia. They were billed as protests against corruption, but the bigger message was clear. Russia without Putin, they chanted. 
Surrounded by riot police, almost none of the rallies had been approved by the authorities, and the crackdown was swift. This woman lifted and dragged away. She later said she wasn't even a protester, one of more than 1,000 people arrested on Sunday. Demonstrators tried to block the arrest of protest organizer and anti-corruption crusader Alexei Navalny. No need to fight to get me out, he tweeted. Our topic of the day is the fight against corruption. Navalny called for the protests after publishing a video report claiming that Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev has amassed huge wealth, luxury yachts and properties during his time in office, claims that Medvedev denies. One American was also arrested. Journalist Alex Lund, who later tweeted, released after five and a half hours after being arrested at Navalny protest and charged with holding an unsanctioned rally. Hundreds are still in detention this morning, and however brave it was for those protesters to come out, President Putin still has an approval rating of around 80 percent. As for his foe, Navalny, he is in court today and has just been fined $350 for organizing those protests. David. Alex Marquardt with us live this morning. Thanks, Alex. And now to a new arrest in that London terror attack as the family of the American tourist who was killed is now speaking out this morning. ABC's Lama Hassan has the latest from London. Good morning, Lama. And good morning to you, David. This morning, the family of Melissa Cochran, the wife of Kurt Cochran, the Utah man who was killed in that ferocious attack in the heart of London, speaking out just moments ago. The most difficult part of all of this is that Kurt is no longer with us, and we miss him terribly. He was an amazing individual who loved everyone and tried to make the world a better place. Now, Melissa Cochran is still in the hospital, still recovering from her wounds. The couple had been in Europe celebrating a milestone, their 25th wedding anniversary tragically cut short. David? It's horrible. All right, Lama Hassan with us with the breaking news. Lama, thank you. Robin. So sad. Yeah. Back here at home, the manhunt for those masked robbers caught on camera breaking into a Las Vegas Rolex store inside the Bellagio Hotel. Witnesses are now speaking out about those terrifying moments, and ABC's Lindsay Janice has more. This morning, Las Vegas police searching for two of these three suspects seen in a cell phone video dressed in animal masks, fleeing the scene after breaking into a high-end Rolex store. Possible active shooter in a zebra mask. The trio targeted the luxury Vegas casino, the Bellagio. Police say the suspects sledgehammered their way into the jewelry store Saturday with tourists in plain sight. One witness close enough to snap this photo. At first, I thought it was just some sort of strange Vegas thing that was happening because there's lots of people in costume. He looked like he was holding something long and black in one hand, and I took a picture and then noticed that he was holding what looked like a gun in the other hand. The incident reminiscent of the film Ocean's Eleven. Hundreds fled the scene after witnesses mistook the sound of sledgehammers for gunshots. Parts of the hotel on lockdown until the robbers made what police describe as a clumsy getaway. They attempted to uh, flee the scene in a vehicle. Um, that vehicle failed to start for them. They tried to carjack some other people. Um, that didn't go so well. They subsequently then fled on foot. No one was injured. Police are not commenting on how much was stolen this morning. One person in custody. The other two suspects are still at large. Guys. All right, Lindsay, thank you. Now Amy has the morning's other top story, starting with an avalanche in Japan. Yeah, this is a, such a sad story. Eight high school students are feared dead after that avalanche at a ski resort just north of Tokyo. Dozens were injured. The students were mountain climbing at the time. Authorities say an avalanche warning was in effect. And some breaking news in the fight against ISIS. The Pentagon is sending as many as 300 additional U.S. troops to Iraq to advise and assist local forces in the battle to retake the city of Mosul. This comes days after the reported deaths of 200 civilians in airstrikes. Well, police are searching for potential suspects after Sunday's deadly shooting at a nightclub in Cincinnati. One person was killed, 15 others injured, some critically. Police say an argument sparked that violence. And two technicians are under arrest after a terrifying scene at a mall when this escalator suddenly reversed direction and doubled its speed, sending shoppers in Hong Kong 
tumbling over one another. 18 were injured. The technicians are accused of tampering with the escalator after the incident. And finally, a real hazard on the golf course. Check this out. One guy's shot ended up right there by that alligator, hitting him. So the alligator says kind of like, hey, that's mine, and uh, grabs the ball swallows it before crawling back to the water. That may be a bit unusual, but anyone who plays golf in Florida knows that alligators are par for the course. Oh. <laughs> well done. Right, 7 15 on a Monday morning, yeah. Yeah. earlier than usual. Yeah, really. I, wonder, I wonder how many golfers are going, I still make my friend take a stroke because he lost that ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, to another frenzy four mm -hmm. par for the course. Um, the final four, the frenzy is a good day to be a Carolina. Doesn't matter if you're North Carolina, or South Carolina, because you're both going on to the next round. And TJ Holmes is here with all the excitement. What's up, TJ? Good morning, kind sir. North Carolina now going to its record 20th final four. The other teams are combined. They've been never, never, and pretty much never. But it, the talk this morning is how North Carolina got there. Put there by a guy who only averages five points a game. North Carolina and Kentucky put on a show in a back and forth Elite Eight thriller. With seven seconds left on the clock, freshman Malik Monk secured the Wildcat comeback with this miracle three pointer. But with the game now tied and seemingly headed to overtime, the Tar Heels race down the court, and this happened. Luke May, a sophomore and former walk-on, hit the game winner with .3 seconds left, sending the Tar Heels to the Final Four. I'm the guy that wanted to become as a walk-on, so how dumb am I? That's right. The talk of college basketball this morning was only a walk-on last year. Recruited from his home state of North Carolina, he passed up scholarship offers at other schools to be a Tar Heel. May usually comes off the bench and averages 14 minutes and just five and a half points a game. And I just kind of stepped back and gave me the ball, and I just shot it, and uh, luckily it went in. In Sunday's other matchup, the unlikely bell of the ball, seven-seeded South Carolina. The Gamecocks advanced to their first ever Final Four, knocking out the Florida Gators in Madison Square Garden. After knocking out Duke and Baylor, the Gamecocks made it a third straight upset. It was defense that powered their unlikely run to the Final Four. Also headed to their first ever Final Four, top-seeded Gonzaga. And the Oregon Ducks, who haven't made it this far since 1939. Yeah, on Oregon there, that was the first ever NCAA tournament held in 1939. They won the championship, so essentially this is their first Final Four. And all the brackets out there, 19 million, ESPN, only 657 had the correct Final Four. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yes. Mississippi State. First ever as well. Yeah, first time. Uh, her nickname is Itty Bitty. Itty Bitty. Uh, how Morgan right. William had 41 points. Wow. So they're going on to the Final Four for the first time. South Carolina women could join have them in. Yeah, the they Oregon have a chance. Well. Yes, a chance they, Oregon well. women. And, oh, UConn. They, and the games are tonight on ESPN. They've got two great games on tonight on ESPN. Final tickets to Dallas. Thank I you, love when she goes all sports and all. <laughs> and now let's go to Ginger. <laughs> Can we keep that bell around? That's all I want to know. I like that. That gets yeah. my attention. I'm in there, Robin. All right, so let's talk about the Northeast, right? So just south and uh, in near the uh, coast, of course, the elevation changes and you're all rain. But you go up and you get up to, say, Manchester, New Hampshire. You're in a freezing rain advisory this morning. And this, I just want to hug this warmth because it is coming this way. I'm inviting it. Memphis 76 today. Look at Philadelphia 70 on Tuesday. Woo! Let's get to those select cities. Brought to you by Walmart. I'm just hugging it. Ready, set, go!
And a very good morning, meteorologist Brian Vandergraaff. Outside this morning, we are looking at some fog, a few spotty showers out there as well, a little bit damp, just not so pretty out there, but the warm air is nudging in here and we'll break into some sunshine from time to time. Temperatures in the low to mid 70s for this afternoon. Could be a hit or miss shower, not a washout afternoon for sure, but keep your umbrella handy just to be on the safe side. Next big change as we head through tomorrow, some showers, maybe even some thunder by Wednesday, Thursday. I think some better days. Yes, it'll be cooler, but it will be drier. Temperatures mid 60s Wednesday, 50s on Thursday. I'm doing it. I'm going big, though. Yes. You, did it, you did it very dainty. No, no. Yes. She's just being. Oh, that's right. Ginger, you can ring my bell. <laughs> 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 ring my bell. It's wonderful.